Okay, so this recording is for Typography, Fall 2016, Project 2. We're going to talk about how to print this larger version. Uh, the first one that we did is 8.5 by 11, and we print that exactly the same way we did Project 1. So there's already a video on that, so you would just follow that printing instruction from Project 1. Uh, but for Project 2, the second part, this is a 10 inch by 10 inch document, or 60 picas by 65, or excuse me, 60 by 60 picas. Um, and we need to do some things that are special because we're going to print to larger format paper. So let's walk through that process. Um, my fonts are loaded and activated. My design is not complete. Uh, again, keeping in mind that this project was about nothing being aligned and typesetting random. However, you still want to read it. We still want to be able to read it and read it in the right order. But I had to stop the previous video because I ran out of time. But this is incorrect right here. This is incorrectly set because these are aligned. This is all up here not aligned, so it's correctly set. And this over here was what I was just stealing from. So I'm just going to leave it down there just for, just for giggles. All right, so to start this process, I'm going to make sure you save the document. Um, you might have even package the document. That's a good idea. But now I'm ready to print it. So I go to File and Print. And this is assuming you're printing in the classroom. If you're taking this to FedEx, which used to be called Kinko's, um, or Office Max or Staples, you'll want to bring your PDF, PDF to them. And I'm going to share with you how to do a PDF with crop marks um, so that you can take them to those places, assuming you might need to do that sometime. So this is, uh, first off, we're going to do File and Print. And in the classroom that we're in, which is 328, we have the 328 printer. And that's nice because it's right here and um, we don't have to go down the hallway. But if it's broken or not running or maybe it's backlogged, we could choose the ones down the hallway. So I'm going to choose this one. Um, so that's the first thing is choose the printer. Uh, the second thing would be to click on Setup over in the left column underneath the word General. And you will see that the paper size says U.S. letter. Well, a 10 by 10 will not fit on an 8.5 by 11 inch piece of paper. It'll fit on the 11 and a half, but it won't fit on the 8 and a half. So in this case, we're going to use 11 by 17. And 11 by 17 is called tabloid. Okay, so this is in the page size. We choose U.S. letter, and we let that flyout menu pop up, and we choose tabloid because that's the other standard piece of paper size or standard paper size we have loaded in the printer. And I'm looking, and there's some there. We may need to put some more in, So, but there is some there. Now, you'll notice that the position of this is not centered, so you it's in the upper left. So make sure for page position, you change that from upper left, okay? You want to change that to centered, not centered horizontally or vertically, just centered. Center that on the page, okay? So now, in your preview, it shows the P for page, um, and it's got this here in the uh, preview. Now. I won't know where to start to cut this thing out because this is going to print our larger paper than what we need. So in order for me to know where to cut it out, I'm going to click on marks and bleeds. And assuming I did set the bleed at an eighth of an inch because my graphics are going off the page, it will print my graphics an eighth of an inch, an eighth of an inch I can't speak today, an eighth of an inch off the page. So that bleed's already set because it's using the document bleed setting, and you can see in gray that's P9. If you don't have a P9 there, uncheck the use document settings and type in P9, which is an eighth of an inch. Okay, so you can manually set it, or you can um, this way, or you can have it automatically set when you create the page in the first place. We talked about that on the previous video. But here we're going to turn on crop marks. Do not turn on bleed marks because it will confuse you. You won't know which ones to use to cut by. So just only turn crop marks on. Do not click on all printer marks because that will also give you a lot of confusing things that are unnecessary. So just crop marks. Uh, now, if you're designing in color, just leave it as color. But I am going to dig in here, and this would be composite gray and text um, as black, assuming I don't have any gray text, if I want to make sure that this charges me for black and white printing. However, if you have red, hello Mustafa, if you have red or other colors, you'll want to make sure that you do the color as um, composite CMYK, okay? So it will charge you a little bit more for color than black and white, but if you are designing in black and white and you do not want to be charged for color printing, you have to specify in the output section that this is composite gray, okay? Just double checking other things. 
okay. Everything else looks pretty good. Now, I'm not ready to hit print yet. What I have to do next is I need to make sure um, that my page setup is set up correctly, meaning it has the right paper. Usually it does. So I click on, in the lower left-hand corner, I click on this page setup button. And I'm just simply double checking to make sure it's going to the right printer and the right paper size. That used to be a problem. Sometimes it would have the wrong printer and the wrong paper size, even though you set it in the initial window. But lately it's been working per fairly well. So I just double check this. And most of the time if I don't double check it, I'm okay. But if you have something not printing, this is something that you might want to investigate this area right here. Make sure it is exactly identical to your setup that you did here, which would be the HP 30, 328 Laser 1. And in the general, we set it up as a tabloid, or set up, we set it up as ta uh, tabloid. So I'm gonna hit okay there. So not a big deal on that one. Now the second item down in the lower left is printer. This guy is a big deal, so I'm gonna click on him. And there will be a warning that comes up, God bless you. Um, I hit okay on that warning. And you guys wanna get in the habit of turning two-sided printing off, so uncheck that, okay? Uncheck two-sided printing. I'm going to dig a little deeper and I'm going to see if there's anything else I need to change here. Right now, this doesn't show a whole lot of details, but there's a show details button on this print um, printer window. And if I click on show details, it expands this out and it kind of gives you some advanced features. So I'm just going to peek around. I'm going to go to color matching and see if there's anything I need to do uh, that, that uh, is related to this black and white issue. Paper handling, okay, no problems there. Paper feed, I don't need to worry about that. The printer's gonna automatically take it from whichever tray has 11 by 17. I don't need a cover page. I'm gonna go to Xerox features and see if there's anything there. And let's see, print quality. Everything looks pretty good here. I suppose if you were using photographs, you could put this print quality in enhanced or photo mode, but this, it's not necessary here. So I really don't need to change anything here. Um, yeah, I'm looking through here. No new changes here. Thank goodness. So you guys don't even have to go there. So I'm going to hit the print button here, which is actually more or less like hitting the OK button. And now I'm going to hit the print button here in the main print dialog box. And it'll go through, it'll process the job. Um, and by the way, before when you open this, if you have pink behind your type, that means you need to load and activate your type. So don't print anything when you have that lucky pink color behind your type. So it's telling me, hey, we're going to release the job if you hit yes, and you will be charged for it. If you see something that's messed up and it's charging you more than what it should for black and white, cancel it hit no and see if we can dig to find some solution to that problem. Now, I don't know if you can hear it on the video, but we can hear it in class. We can hear the printer warming up and it's getting ready to spit this thing out. Um, and uh, while it's spitting it out, I would like to save it. And when you save a document after you printed it, it saves the printing setup. It's really nice. So if you go back to the document and print it later, it will know what you wanted. Now let's talk about creating a PDF in the event that you wanted to print away from class at a place such as your Kinko's or your Staples or Office Depot or some other output place like UPS has them, that kind of thing. Um, so here's how we make a PDF with crop marks. Now, when you package this, it automatically creates a PDF, but it does not create one with crop marks, okay? So uh, pa it's okay to take that PDF to Kinko's, but you won't know where to cut it out. So let's create a, manually a PDF with crop marks in the event that you need to take it elsewhere to print. So I'm going to go to File, and I am going to go halfway down to Adobe PDF Presets. And in this case, I want a high-quality print. And uh, I know you won't be able to see this on video, but it came out, and it has crop marks. And I will share with you... Uh, how to cut this in just a moment. And that I will not be able to videotape. I'll do it by hand. We'll all gather around back. I'll have my X-Acto knife and stuff and, and I'll share with you some X-Acto knife safety um, and how to deal with crop marks. But back to the PDF. We go to File, Adobe PDF Preset, and we choose High Quality Print. And in this, we have to tell it where to go. So if I have packaged this file recently, I probably want to put this in my folder that is the package folder, which has the word folder at the end. Um, so I'm going to hit save. I don't even think I've packaged part two of this yet. And I only, I think I've only packaged part one of this. So make sure you remember to, you'll have two packaged folders. 
one for part one, which is your Garamon, Baskerville, Bodoni, Century Expanded. And then part two will be this really awesome Helvetica thing. So you'll have two folders. Okay, so now that I'm in this uh, export PDF window, you want to click on marks and bleeds over here in this far left column. It's the third item down. And you want to go ahead and set this bleed at P9. That's an eighth of an inch. Click on, well, if the link tool is broken, it will not put them on all of them. But this link tool is connected. So I just hit the tab key and it will make them all P9. And then I want to turn my crop marks on here as well. Okay, just crop marks. Don't turn anything else on. Now I'm going to... I don't think it gives us a place to center it to the page, but as long as we have crop marks, we're okay. Yeah, let's see here. Yeah, we'll just do, um, oh, oh, it doesn't really give us anything to make it black and white. Like when we go to print the PDF, you can tell it black and white. So just turn on crop marks and set the bleed at an eighth of an inch, which is P9, and then hit export. And I already told it what folder to go to. And um, let me show you what this will look like. So I've got my type file class. I have my project two, see how I'm organized? And I have my project two folder, which is one of the package folders. And here I have um, my Helvetica PDF. And it also says it was made today. If you lose stuff, do click it on date modified. It'll flip the most recent thing to the top. That's really nice. So um, I'm gonna double click on it and it's gonna open an Acrobat typically or preview, which I can't stand. But uh, and it will show you exactly what I'm going to get. Oh, I forgot I made that red. I should have printed this in color. Oh, it printed in black and white. My Swiss is not red. Ooh, I made a mistake. Uh, but at any rate, there is the crop marks, or there are the crop marks. And when I go to print this, I can print this at Kinko's. Uh, tell them, oh, yes, if you take this to Kinko's or Office Max or Staples, tell them this. Because on default, on every computer, even theirs, it says shrink oversized pages. And what that will do, it will either shrink it or it will fit it to the page. And it will make it bigger or smaller than you need it. And I'll measure your stuff and I'll mark you down for not having the right size. Ooh, that's not what we want. Size matters on prints, so make sure you get the right size. So instead of shrink oversized pages, tell your friendly FedEx, Staples, whatever person, print person, make sure that you print the actual size. Make sure it doesn't shrink or in, shrink to fit the paper or enlarge to fit the paper, okay? Make sure you tell your service provider that. They are oftentimes not very well trained because they're not getting paid very well and they were in a hurry when they were hired and didn't have time to train them. So it's our jobs to tell them because I, I, I see it all the time with students. You come in and your stuff's printed too large or too small. So we have to tell them. When you print my PDF, make sure you tell it its actual size. And here they will uh, be able to um, change the size of the paper. They can go to the advanced button and they can make um, they can make uh, it the right page and so on. I don't typically print my PDFs here at the school unless I've had a problem with um, printing my InDesign file. Then I might print my PDF. But I would go to page setup and set it to um, uh, not any printer but the laser for 328. I would set this to tabloid and I would hit OK. I would click on the printer to make sure everything is good here. Take off two-sided if it's on. And I don't really need, I'm not printing on anything special. And I looked here earlier. Don't really need to do anything there other than turn off two-sided printing. And now when I print this, it should print to the printer. It will charge me color because uh, I didn't tell it black and white and I have red in this. And I'm going to hit, yes, I'm accepting the charges. And now it's printing my second one, which will have crop marks. And it will also be in color. Um, the position of it will probably be near the top of the page versus the center, which is what we had on InDesign, but that's not a big deal right now. Now, if I were printing a book and it needed to be perfectly printed front to back, that might be a problem. But for this one, oh, it did center it. How nice. So there's that. So now I have red Swiss. Now, from a distance, you probably can't even tell that's a red Swiss because red and black are so close in value. Okay, so I'm going to stop this video. Um, oh, no, one other thing. Uh, make sure you package your second InDesign thing too, which is your Helvetica. Don't forget to package it. 
Um, so I am going to package this because I haven't yet. And no, no, I didn't have any problems there. It sometimes asks you, do you want to save it? So I'm saving it. And I'm going to hit continue. And I'm going to take this to my project to folder. Um, let me expand this out. I'm going to go to my desktop. No, 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 I'm not. I'm going to do this view. Okay, that view. Try and get, okay, I'll go to desktop. I'm going to go to my typography fall 2016. I'm going to go to project two. I'm not going to click in there. I'm just going to click on project two and I'm going to help tell it to package it. And give me the warning about fonts again that I might not own them, so be careful about that. And it's creating a PDF and all sorts of stuff, but it's not creating a PDF with crop marks. And I haven't found, and I need to do some research to see if I can override the automatic PDF it creates and, and see if I can set it to automatically do crop marks and bleeds, but I haven't taken the time to find that yet. And I don't know if we can do it yet, but I hope so. So when you're ready to turn this in, you will have two folders. Let me close this out go back to my project 2 folder. So I have two package folders in my project 2 folder. I have one that just says project 2 Rebecca Bilbrey folder and I have project 2 Helvetica. <coughs> now if you want to call yours just part 1 and part 2 that's fine but I do need to have them named differently um, and clearly make sure either part 1 or part 2 will work or the second one at least if it has Helvetica I'll understand what that is. So I am, when I'm ready to turn these in, so this is for Tuesday of next week, I am going to create a new folder. I'm just going to do it on my desktop here. Oops, excuse me, I clicked the wrong thing. And I am going to create one folder called Project 2 and put my name. And inside of that folder, I am going to put my... Uh, first part of that project that's been packaged and my second part that's been packaged and then I am going to zip this master folder that has those other two folders in it. I will compress it and it'll be ready to turn in. So there's the compressed <coughs> file. But you'll have two packaged folders inside of a new folder you created and, and put them into. Okay, uh, so And make sure you package them. Don't just give me your InDesign file. I cannot grade your stuff if you don't package it and give me your zipped package stuff, okay? So uh, that creates problems and, you know, if you do it the first time, I'm like, okay, I'm not going to be so hard on you first time, but if you keep doing it, it's like minus 10 points if you don't turn it in properly. So um, that hurts, so make sure you don't hurt yourself like that. Package your stuff, zip it, um, and make sure you turn in packaged zipped things. Uh, I will have on Tuesday, let me see if I already have it in there in week two. Um, yeah, I already arranged this so that if you clicked on um, the week two project where it says project two, if this underline link, if you click on that, you can actually turn these in by scrolling down and hitting browse my computer and then finding your zip file and getting it and then submitting it. Now I'll get an error because I'm a teacher, but... Um, you can do that just the same way we did our last project, okay? But this will be in week two. It won't be in week three. And I know next week will be week three. So when you're ready to turn this in, you'll have to go to week two. All right. So that concludes printing with bleeds, crop marks, creating a, your own PDF with bleeds and crop marks in case you have to go elsewhere to print. And it also covers uh, making sure you have both of these packaged and putting one folder, rename that folder, zip it, and turn it in. That concludes my video. Any questions? Alrighty.